Welcome to this series of videos where we talk to Dr. Warren Corns, who's Research and Technical Support Manager at PS Analytical, about uh, mercury and the various issues to do with mercury in the environment and analysis of mercury. So Warren, how do you go about determining the uh, levels of mercury in water samples? Well, the level of mercury in water is actually a very low concentration and mercury isn't that stable uh, in this type of sample matrix. So once a sample is collected it has to be preserved um, and this is typically done by adding a small quantity of um, acid and sometimes a uh, chemical oxidant. What does this does, it actually uh, fixes the mercury in the sample so it can be stored ready for the measurement at a later stage. The sample container is also important because uh, mercury has the ability to stick to the walls of the container and so um, PFA and FPA materials are um, uh, good materials and, so, and you can use glass also. When the samples get back to the laboratory they're um, um, acidified and we add a, a chemical oxidant such as bromobromide and this actually generates some bromine monochloride which is a powerful oxidant for uh, mercury and that converts all the mercury in the sample to a divalent form uh, which is a mercury bromide complex and then uh, we react the samples with uh, stannous chloride which forms mercury vapour and then this is detected um, uh, using our atomic fluorescence spectrometer. So once we've gone through that process uh, what levels can the instruments that uh, you deal with actually get down to in terms of levels of measuring mercury in water? The detection limit for this uh, technique is 0.1 of a part per trillion and uh, if you use the amalgamation instrument you can get down to 0.02 nanograms per litre.